Hey guys, between being busy at work and moving to a new place, I haven't had much time to do any videos lately, but I thought I would take a break in between taking loads to the new place to make a video about what's inside this box. This is a gamble I took on eBay recently of some vintage service info. So let's take a look inside. I've got a bunch of binders. I'm not sure what exactly is in them. There were a few photos in the eBay listing, but I don't know exactly what all is in here. So here's the first one. Stancor, Chicago Transformer, TV Replacement Guide. Don't know if that's exactly what's in here. Uh, so let's take a look. All right, we've got RCA Radio Phono Television Service tips dated January 30th, 1951. The old meatball logo. I'm making reference here to the early metal cone pitcher tubes. Prior to around 1950 or so, all the CRTs were entirely glass, and as they got bigger and bigger, they got quite heavy. So somebody had the idea to make part of the pitcher tube out of metal. So the business end where the electron gun is is glass, but the rest of it is a metal cone except for the glass on the front of the pitcher tube. It saved a lot of weight and let them make larger and larger pitcher tubes. But the problem, well, potential problem, is that the high voltage goes right to that metal cone. So if we're working on one of these and the set is turned on and you touch that, you are going to get zapped. And here they talk a bit about the, the situation dealing with these is that you've got to insulate this from the rest of the set and the control so there's a plastic uh, ring that goes around the front and a shroud all to protect the user from getting zapped by that high voltage which would be upwards of 16,000 volts or so now up to April of 52 so it looks like somebody was probably subscribed to their uh, service notes and compiled them all, not 55, they compiled them all in this binder. I don't have a whole lot of uh, RCA, well, I, don't really, I don't think I have any RCAs from this era, but it's cool to see this nonetheless. Here they're talking about uh, what well, you've seen me deal with in the predictive sets. Instead of point-to-point -point soldered wiring, they switch to wrapping wires around posts. Solderless collections, solderless connections with, uh, made with a power tool. Basically, wire wrapping. So you'd have a, a gun like this, and you'd put your wire into the end of it, and do a little zzz, and it would wrap the wire around the post. Nice for construction, no doubt it sped things up on the assembly line, but not so nice for servicing. Tips for reception and fringe areas. Alright, on and on up to 57 now. And we're jumping to 64. Notice the logo is starting to change a bit as we go forward in time. Now we've really jumped into the more modern logo, 1968. The construction got very different by then. Circuit boards and uh, getting into solid state. It also looks a bit older. I think we're going back in time a bit now. Yeah, 1950. So these must not be in chronological order. bunch of RCA service tips. Let's see what's in the next binder. Oh, well, let's see a Philco logo right away. So although it says Kelvinator on the jacket, that is not what is inside. Household refrigerators, electric ranges, commercial refrigeration. But inside we've got Philco service bulletins. Philco 
Volco Factory Supervised Service. I think that says there. It's a bit cut off by that graphic. 1964. Again, a bit newer than the stuff I usually work on. I'm getting into circuit boards again. But it's cool to see this stuff nonetheless. Color TV. Maybe, maybe one of these days I'll get a real vintage color set. So far, the best I've got is a GE Porta Color set. Maybe someday I'll get a roundy. Especially now that I've got more room. Alright, next binder. This one is totally generic. Flip that upside down. More Filco. Ooh, this is earlier stuff. Tell that because I saw, I think, a glimpse. Yep, Filco 7008, which I do have, and I will get back to working on. That is an all-in-one uh, scope and sweep generator. All-in-one for doing alignments on TVs. Forty-nine. Foco stresses service. <laughs> Maybe someday, if I've got the time, I will go through and scan all of this. But that'd be a uh, pretty major undertaking. Shop talk corner. Yeah, there were a lot of publications back in the day where they would give uh, tips to the service guys. For sure, it was very valuable to share information with the service techs about how to work on these old TVs and radios. Now we've got the forums in that old shop. Filco fax and those old video uh, TV cameras. through all these and reading them. May 1951. So it's one thing to get Sam's with their service info or maybe the Riders or Wallace Tellier's, but when you can get the real original stuff from RCA or Philco and get that extra touch Wireless remote control, 1940 I'm guessing, so when they show the models and it says 40, that usually means it's like 40 dash, it means it's from 1940. And then of course around 41, 42 everything was put on hold for a while during World War II. going on which also had a bit of an impact on the industry. Alignment of receivers. One about remote control. Yeah, 7020. I do have a very compact Philco oscilloscope. I think I might have the 7020. I started doing a little bit of work on it. Still have a bit to go. The CRT that came with it was really trashed. It's a 3RP1, but I do have a replacement. And I uh, do intend to fully restore it. I mean, when you need the scopes this old, I mean, they, they were really designed just for servicing. Uh, TVs and uh, to some extent radios and 
They're not exactly like a modern uh, full featured scope, but they can do a lot of stuff. Uh, these were really designed to be simple and portable. Uh, uh, working on these old TVs. I'm not sure it looks familiar. I've got a few old Philco TVs from around 5051. Uh, that's when I got into the split chassis design. Ooh, cabinet refinish and touch up. Somebody posted uh, some notes similar to this uh, dealing with radios. I think uh, some of the restorers out there would appreciate it if I could scan this and uh, post it online. So these are tips for, well, how to touch up cabinets back in the day. I lowered my tripod a bit, so maybe we can get an even better look at these. Sylvania News. Again, it looks like somebody reusing an old binder. Yes, it is indeed. Now we're into transistors. 1958. So these would all be germanium transistors for sure. And yes, we're under the printed circuit era now. For quite a while there was there were uh, hybrid sets with transistors and tubes. <laughs> Picture on the wall TV projection sets, 1959 style. Imagine they didn't work too well, but hey, they were trying. Huh, they're talking about uh, EL panels, electroluminescent. Must have been cutting edge back then. Didn't know, realize they had EL panels in that far back. Sort of a precursor to LCDs. A television screen. CRT assembly plant. You see all the stems sticking up on the uh, early CR on the old CRTs there. 1959. These must have been on like 110, 120 degree sets. Very shallow, like they used in the Predicta sets. And we're getting into stereo now. cool about these is they have supplements like for new tube types that came out here is updated settings for your tube tester. So much info to scan and collate and, and put out there for people. Bonded. So I'm sure you've seen me in plenty of these old TVs where there's a piece of safety glass in front. Two pieces of the glass with a plastic uh, uh, a piece of plastic in between. So if the CRT would implode, it would protect you from flying glass. Well, when they got into bonded, well, they actually would, well, effectively glue a piece of uh, plastic onto the front of the CRT. You can see how they got into the more shallow pitch tubes that went from 90 to 110 degree. And then even the shorter guns like they used in protectors. And the GE coaxial sets. All about making picture tubes thinner and thinner and thinner, but still keeping them safe by bonding the safety plastic right to the CRT itself. And any of you guys that have had uh, color sets know that they can develop cataracts where the plastic, or rather the adhesive degrades and they uh, get clouded and they need to be removed and replaced. Here's about the actual manufacturing process to do the bonding.
TV tuner repair and alignment. You do not want to have to repair and align a tuner if at all possible. It is not an easy or fun process, that's for sure. It requires specialized equipment. I want to know how. More advantages about pitcher tubes. It's all about making them thinner and thinner and lighter and lighter and cheaper. And yeah, as you made them bigger and bigger and flatter and flatter, you get more and more optical defects and you have things like pincushion correction. Alright, what's in the next one? United Service Motors. Somehow I suspect that that's not what they're talking about inside. No, oh, more Sylvania news. Got an old tube tester. Ooh, 1946. Earliest yet. Right at the dawn of TVs. Oh, well, look at that. Three inch service oscilloscope. Never seen that model before. More field service equipment. Luminized CRTs. That lets you uh, do away with the ion trap and use higher voltages and get a brighter picture. Cool photos of the production line, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, if I had, <laughs> someday if I've got the time, and the equipment, I would love to scan all this stuff, but there's just so much info. I wonder if that's the shop this came from. Sylvania 404. I do have a couple early Sylvania oscilloscopes. I don't think I have a 404, but I do have a couple early ones that use 7 inch CRTs, and I do intend to restore them. More about pincushion. Yeah. I kind of jumped to the back, so we're at 54 now. Smaller CRTs, the round ones, they don't have pincushion issues, but when you get to the rectangular ones, you start to run into that. Well, now, Sylvania produced a lot of uh, tubes and uh, pitcher tubes, so not surprisingly, the Sylvania News is going to have a lot about CRT development and uh, test equipment. They did make some TVs, but uh, not too many. I don't think I've ever come across one. Four hundred. I think I have that. I think I have a 400 and a 401 or something like that. Sleep generators, tube testers. Polymeter. Designed for television, FM, AM, and electronic circuits. Cool, never seen one of those either. Model uh, 221. Audio oscillator. Another scope. Maybe I got one of these. It's a Model 132. I know mine are really primitive. Yeah, 7 inch. Both of mine are 7 inch. Maybe I've got a Model 132. Sorry I'm going through these so fast, but there's just so much info here. Now we've got one uh, that appears to be a GE manual. We'll, we'll see if that's actually what's inside of it. Yes it is, and this looks like it's pretty ancient. 
price 15 cents, second printing. Let's see, date anywhere. But just going by the types of circuits I'm seeing, it's got to be around 1950. Talking about a lot of replacement parts here. Two six fifty one, eighteen fifty one. A lot of service bulletins. Is that the RCA stuff we saw earlier? Awfully familiar RTO092. When I was restoring my GE810, uh, I had a lot of issues with the flyback, and I think I may have seen this service note. I know I ended up trying to swap it out with one from another set to get things working right. Service info here for specific sets. If I'm lucky, I'll have some for sets that I actually own. Don't have an 815, but I do have an 8 or an 806 and an 800 and an 802. Simply the writer's service info would be reprints of the original factory service info. So I bet a lot of this is covered in the writer's service manuals. Now here's a couple thin folders. This one has no markings on it at all. Sylvania News, 1955. Oh, that's cool. The 5AXP4. I'm sure you've seen me use this if you've watched me uh, some of my older videos. That is the Tusk CRT I used for the old round black and white sets. 1955. I would have thought that would have been introduced a lot sooner than that because round picture tubes were not a fashion around 1950. I would have thought this uh, check tube would have been introduced many years earlier than 55. Huh. That's cool. Looks like all about the development of it and, uh, and how to use it. Very, very cool stuff. And stuff about early color TV. Uh, this is definitely well, well worth the purchase. I've never seen a lot of this info before. And now they're talking about the 8XP4. That is the early test CRT for rectangular picture tubes, which you've also seen me use most recently in my Dumont. RA113 restorations introduced in 56 so the point in using those is you don't have to have to lug around the big picture tube that's actually in the set you can use these little 5 and 8 inch CRTs in lieu of them and they're, they're rugged they're meant to be able to withstand if the voltages are off you're not going to ruin it. Hmm, FADA. This is actually going to be FADA info? No, Motorola.
<laughs> not the greatest reproductions. The old Motorola logo where it's just a, a squiggle instead of, an, instead of a stylized M. 1952, 1954. A lot of diagrams seems to. Well, yeah, some very, very cool stuff. A proposed new Motorola office and engineering headquarters located on Tui Avenue in Niles, Illinois. I don't know if that was ever actually made uh, or built, I should say, but uh, I certainly know the area. It's not too far from where I grew up. And uh, mm, I don't think that was built, <laughs> I gotta say. I, I know Niles pretty well and I don't recall ever seeing anything quite like that. All right, we've got one left to go. Ugh. Big old Filco manual. Oh, that's in really good shape too. Factory supervised service. Monochrome television. Looks like it's fairly new though. Starting in, well this is 66, it's at 60 here. 60 to 66. Kind of a drag because it's right after the predictors. So this would be after Ford bought them, I guess. I suppose my town and country might be in here. But uh, none of the none of the classic Filka stuff. Yeah, a lot of people think that like Filco disappeared after the predictors. No, Ford bought them and they, they were around for a long time after that. All right, well that is the end of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this look at some vintage service info. Be looking for some more videos coming soon, including a look at my new place.